Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I have a really cool video for you guys. Um, I have been thinking a lot about um, graduating law students, um, graduated law students, um, and, and students like, like me <laughs> who were going through the whole bar prep exam period and bar prep period um, a few years back. And now that the state of affairs is a little different considering COVID and all the things going on in the world, um, a lot of protocols that are normal or have been the norm for so many years have changed, um, especially when it comes to the actual bar exam, particularly in the state of Maryland. I know nationally things have changed quite a bit, but I definitely wanted to kind of like come on here and sit down and talk to you guys a little bit about my advice for graduated and graduating law students. So if you are interested in hearing what I have to say about this subject, keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you like videos, like law-related videos such as this, and I'll be sure to try to come up with some different ideas on how um, I can incorporate my current life with um, the videos I used to make, which were more law school related. So I do have my notes here because I did have to do a little research on um, the current state of the Maryland bar exam. Um, and I wanted to kind of go through a little bit of a background on myself because I haven't really talked about law school related stuff in quite some time. Um, I am now making more lifestyle videos um, and I don't really make that many videos related to law or um, the legal realm because um, I'm not practicing. So I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about how, you know, I have been like, you know, about three years removed from the law school experience. I graduated back in 2017 from the University of Baltimore School of Law. Um, I don't practice, as I said, uh, but I, I feel like the education that I gar garnered um, during my time as a law student um, was inval invaluable. Um, it, the education I received has shaped who I am, um, how I show up in a room, how I speak, um, how I formulate opinions on things, um, how I deal with people, um, a lot of different things. And so when it comes to just learning and um, deciding whether or not law school is something that's worth it for you, um, at this point, I definitely feel like for me, it was definitely worth it because it has gotten me into rooms and at tables with people I've never thought I would ever be at the table with. Um, and I really do and I really did enjoy my experience and um, without it, I don't know um, if I'd be living the same kind of life um, I want for myself right now. Maybe later, but definitely not right now. So I kind of wanted to just talk through this a little bit and I do have my notes like I said um, which is why I'm looking down um, so my current career tra career track I am in contracting right now and I would not have been able to I don't know if I've been as likely a candidate for the job uh, that I'm in right now if I had not gained the experience through my time in law school and um, I have some other work experience that has helped me also, but I definitely feel like having that JD behind my name has has helped me to, has given me access to people and situations and uh, has gotten me into rooms that I don't know if I would have otherwise gotten. Um, and so my current background, my current contract background has also led me to a lifestyle that I'm very happy with um, and one that I'm very proud of. And so, um, I, I love I love the track that I took and I wanted to kind of like say that be off the bat because a lot of people ask me if I'm practicing or if I'm intend on you know practicing in the future and I don't know right now um, the jury is still out on that a little law school uh, joke for you guys the jury is still out on that but um, as of right now um, you know I just want to kind of live a life that I'm proud of and that 
you know, provides for my family and builds generational wealth. And so I'm doing that even as we speak without actually practicing law. And I want the graduating law schools out there, well, graduating law students out there to know that you don't have to practice just to be, to be successful. You can be successful in other things as well. And the JD will open up your world for that as well. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of law school friends, um, people that I graduated with, um, people that um, are in law school as we speak. I have a lot of Tony, Tony, my husband has a lot of frat brothers, some frat brothers who are in law school or who have graduated from law school. Um, and a couple of times recently, the bar exam has come up in my household because for the first time in a long time, I think it's the first time in history, um, the actual bar exam, which was supposed to be last month in July, has been moved to October of this year. Um, and as of right now, um, the bar exam, as you guys know, is, or you may, may or may not know, the bar exam is usually administered twice a year, July and February. July, usually towards the end of the last week or so of July, and usually the last week or so in February. And as of right now, the bar exam has been moved to October and um, it is going to be administered um, via a, a, a computer software and you're gonna be proctored, um, is you're gonna be exercising social distancing and gonna be proctored um, via computer. Um, and it's an interesting thing because when I took the bar exam, it was in person and you were in a, a massive, it's spread out across the state of Maryland. Depending on your, the last, your last name, you were put in a specific place. And in that specific place, you sat down at a desk in a giant ballroom of other graduated law students who have been studying all summer. <laughs> and you take the test all at once. Um, not all at once, but over the course of two days. And those two days were approximately six to eight hours of testing. Um, this year, I'm gonna read this because this is new to me, so I'm gonna read this. Right now, it's in a remote exam, like I said, and it is going to be four 90-minute test sessions over the course of two days. So I think the exam is gonna be ex administered October 5th and 6th of this year, and the first day is going to be a 90-minute um, um, performance test, and then a 90-minute multi-state um, essay exam, which are going to be three essays. And then the second day are two 90 minute sessions of MBE questions, which is multi-state bar examination or multiple choice questions. Um, so you have, so that's 90 minutes. It's an hour and a half. So three hours of testing a day, um, give or take a few, uh, a few an hour or so for, you know, getting yourself set up, um, breaks and things like that, all that factored in. And so three, three, three to four hours a day of testing. Um, this is drastically different from what I experienced back in 2017. And um, I wanted to kind of like give you guys some advice on how to handle this because um, not necessarily the change because the, the test is the test. I, I can't give you guys specific tips on the test itself, but I can give you tips on how to govern yourselves and how to best tackle the test so that you go into it feeling a lot more prepared, a lot more relaxed, and ready to basically conquer it. Cause I, I want you guys to like kill the test. Um, so my first piece of advice is to manage your distractions during bar prep. Um, most bar prep, a lot of bar prep back when I was taking the test was in person. That is not a, an option right now. Um, and considering the fact that a lot of things, a lot of classes and bar prep courses are being taken remotely now, it's gonna be of utmost important, importance to manage your distractions. Delete Instagram, delete Twitter, delete Facebook. Turn off your notifications on your phone. Put your phone in another room while you're while you're while you're prepping for the exam, while you're studying. Um, even turn off notifications on your computer. Um, block certain. There are are certain um, websites that you can use to block access while you're studying. So if you low key just type in Facebook. And you know, sometimes your fingers, your your fingers just go. You automatically click on Instagram on your phone, or you automatically type in Facebook or whatever 
on your on your laptop you can block those websites for a specific amount of times so that you don't have to worry about getting distracted while you're studying um you really want to manage distractions and that doesn't necessarily just mean social media it can also mean um people um you're gonna have to say no to things and obviously with covid and everything going on right now it's probably a little bit easier to say no to things because there aren't there isn't much going on <laughs> on a social level when it comes to like gatherings and parties and vacations and things like that. There is nowhere to go if you're gonna, if you've decided to take this test and commit to preparing for it, then more than likely you're gonna have to say no to um, a little excursions and things and family gatherings and things like that uh, if you're not already doing so because of COVID. Um, and managing distraction, this is one thing I feel like I could have done better when it came to my study. Um, I was still on Instagram, I was still uploading, I think um, I think I uploaded a couple times during my bar prep um, period, and I think if I could do it over again, I, I would change that and I would completely disappear off the face of the earth, <laughs> with the exception of seeing my husband um, and close family and friends occasionally. Like I think I would have um, handled that a little bit better so that I could have better prepared. So my second thing I would say is manage your anxiety. Um, I had a lot of anxiety during this time frame. I was so worried about whether or not I was going to pass. I was so worried about something going wrong the day of. I was so worried about just, just there was a fear of failure. And I think that if you can manage that, that anxiety or that fear, um, then you're able to better perform on the test. And you'll be, be, be better prepared, more relaxed, all that. So, um, one thing I would say is, you know, make sure you're working out to get rid of that that nervous energy. Um, eating healthy. Make sure you're eating good foods that don't make you sleepy. Um, make sure you're you're eating things. It's gonna. It's easy to say, oh, I'm, I'll eat later, or I just need something quick because I have to get back to studying. If you're eating things that um, things like uh, fish and vegetables or and lean proteins and um, whole grains and things that actually make and feed your body and give your body energy that two o'clock slump that you might get in the middle of a crazy study session won't happen you'll actually feel energized and make sure you're drinking a lot of water and taking breaks when necessary um, meditation and prayer it's important to like have some form of quiet time or just time where you're just letting your brain rest during the day. For me, this was the first thing in the morning when I was prepping. Um, I did have to work a half, a half days um, for a portion of my bar prep period and then I went to full days of just full study. Um, so during that time, I would get up in the morning, have quiet time, would um, either, or, or I would go to the gym. Uh, and sometimes the gym was also meditative as well because while I was doing cardio or working, you know, doing weights or something like that, it was easy for me to kind of like get into my own, listen to some calming music, a podcast, and just like, you know, zen, zen out or whatever. So for um, just meditation or prayer, whatever you choose, whatever you want to do, I definitely recommend it. Um, even a guided meditation on, on YouTube is helpful. Um, or something to just get your mind off of the anxiety of bar prep. Um, another thing I would recommend is having a solid routine. I kind of went through that in number two, but definitely having a solid time that you do specific things. Um, for me, it was getting up, hitting the gym, or having some quiet time, going to work for half a day, then going immediately to where I needed to go or needed to be to study. Uh, for the rest of the day and go and going through my bar, bar prep classes at night um that was my those that was my schedule my husband knew my schedule my husband knew where i was on any given portion of my day um just so he could keep tabs on where i was and what i was doing and that way he knew not to disturb me um when he knew i was when he, when he knew i was studying um another thing i can't stress enough and this is probably one of the most important things is a solid sleep schedule too you have to have a time where you shut things down when you're not studying when you're just relaxing um a lot of bar prep programs factor this in for you and there are they do and they go hard though they also go hard and tell you you know 
no, you probably shouldn't study. You, you, or you, no, you probably shouldn't rest this day. You should probably rest tomorrow when you have, you know, a quieter Sunday afternoon. Um, bar some bar prep programs do kind of aid you in doing that, but I definitely recommend um, getting a good night's sleep. Um, if I could go back and do it again, it's it's probably more detrimental to cram through the night than it is to actually get some decent rest at a decent hour and get up in early enough in the morning to you know to start your day and then lastly um a solid study schedule um this is important as well uh you need to put yourself on a solid solid regimen so that you know when you're studying when you're not when you're eating when you Put yourself on a solid schedule and give yourself check boxes of what you need to get done during each study session. Um, there is a ton of material that you guys have to know. Um, it's overwhelming at times. Um, there are specific, um, your, your bar prep program is going to tell you what areas you need to focus on, what areas you may need to focus on less. Um, for example, um, Crim law, constitutional law were huge subjects on the actual bar exam for me in Maryland. Family law was a much smaller subset of law that needed to be learned. And you may or may not have taken that, that class while you were in law school. So I knew I needed to focus a lot more on crim law and on constitutional law, for example, than I did on family law because family law tended to be tested less, far less on the exam than constitutional or crim. And so that's just an example, and it may not be the same in your state, but I just want you guys to, to recognize and make note of the things that when bar prep programs let you know that, hey, you may not need to focus on this as much, make sure you study it, but also focus on this over here as well because it's a bigger portion of your exam and you're going to need to know more of it in order to be able to apply to the fact sets that they give you. Um, so I hope that this makes sense and I hope that this is helpful. This is my best effort <laughs> for um, being a help or a being of assistance to those of you who might be prepping for the bar exam wherever you are this is me encouraging you and letting you know that you can get through this time and you will get through this time and you'll be better for it when you pass and you are able to be sworn in and you are able to continue your law career uh, wherever you see fit um, I hope this is helpful don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know if there are any additional videos you'd like to see um, if not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.